that team you put out, who cares how many times you change or, or who you piss off, that team you put out, are they going to win? Don't make a promise. <laughs> Should you be writing a book at 24? Like, 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 let's start there. Like, let's start there. Should you be writing a book at 24 years of age? So that's what this guy has done. My journey so, so far. I'm like, you see, you see okay, I'll tell you what the issue is. I don't, I don't blame the guys who write the book. I blame people that say, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. Because Pulisic is Captain America, a.k.a. Steve Rogers, a.k.a. Marvel, and so forth. Guys are like, oh my gosh, of course you want to see a book about Pulisic after he's... Oh, you're, you're freaking 24. And you've not really done much. You've not really done much in your career. Let's see, his height is something that we're probably going to discuss, which is um, scoring an article at the Ben and Bay against Real Madrid. Now, let's, let's, let's talk about this, because I'm so happy that I watched ESPN FC break this down. Because Steve Nichol, who normally is a brick and says some rubbish statements, actually said something truthful. And I think it's I think why what he said was good is because oh God, oh, what he said was good is because um he was a manager. I think because he was a manager and a coach, he's coming from a place of um experience. It's coming from a, 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 a place of experience. So First leg, Champions League. I was worried. Real Madrid. Woo! This is, you know, thingy royalty and so forth. And this is still a new um, Chelsea team that always Lampard tried to ruin and, and so forth. So, like, and again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not expecting much. No, I'm expecting to lose. Like, I'm expecting to lose because I'm like, okay, bro, took just here for a party job. But you just never know. And people, you see, people people look at the political, people forget the ball from Rudiger. That's Go back to that thing because I said, you know, yes, Pulisic did uh, was amazing and his composure was superb. That ball from Rudiger was freaking amazing, freaking amazing. But Chelsea were like, oh no, no, we don't need Rudiger anymore. But yeah, Pulisic that was, a, that was an amazing, superb solo goal, and you think to yourself that man, like this guy's hot, he sits, but he has to play. So then Pulisic now realizes that okay, so he was rested against Fulham. And he was told, and this is the issue, he was told by, by Tuchel that you're definitely going to play. Second leg comes. On the day of the game, he doesn't play. Havertz is picked ahead of him. Now, before I watched the ESPN FC, but I was like, policy, there's no beef. What, what's, what's beef is that to have? As a manager, my only concern is results. And my concern is what is the best 11 for this game? Champions League. Is different from the league. You see, the league of a philosophy mentions the league, you have your 11 and you recycle that. A few tweets, but you recycle that 11. Champions League, going up against the top managers and players who are on power with you, you have to. It is the haven of tacticians. You have to be extreme tactical. Hence why, say all you want to say about the Tuk, he's a great tactician. Hence why he got pitched to the first UCL final and won the, the fucking UCL with Chelsea. So, bro, of course, of course, like, if let's say the, the game was on a Tuesday, on, on, on Saturday, you may have a lineup. Monday, you may change the lineup. On the day, you may, no, you may change it because and specifically, if it's between Pulisic and Havertz, that is a huge decision because those are two totally completely different players that pose totally different prom, um, problems for the opposition. One player is faster and very direct, another player is a lot more te technical and a little bit much more unorthodox in his movements. They, the way they move and the way they play and the decisions they make on the pitch are completely different. They are totally different players. So it is a massive decision as to whether you're going to go with how Pulisic attacks the opposition or how Havertz attacks the opposition. And as you saw, because bro, I give that, I give that goal to Havertz. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't give it down what it says on the on Wikipedia. Screw, says screw Wikipedia, screw Wikipedia, man. That goal is Havertz's goal, not Werner's goal. Okay, Werner don't get that goal. That is Havertz's goal. And just the way Havertz played and, and the problems he caused, it was right. If Pulisic starts to do Chelsea to win, I, I still believe so. But based on how pivotal Havertz was and how key he was in that game and in the final, Tuchel was right. So I was like, bro, Christian, you can't have any beef with it because, look, it is what it is. A manager should... 
how, it doesn't matter how many times he changes his team. All that matters is that team you put out. Who cares how many times you change or, or who you piss off? That team you put out, are they going to win? And is that the best team for this game? And it was. But this is what I missed. This is what Steve Nichols said. And Steve Nichols is using his manager's experience. See, as a manager, it's not just about tactics. It's about relationships and about working with, with, with guys. This judge is called one of Fergie's great assets is how he relates to players. I'm going to use another example because I don't want to for, for, forget this now. I don't think you can name any player that doesn't like Carlo Ancelotti. I believe, I may be wrong, I believe that Carlo Ancelotti is the most liked manager in all of football. Now, maybe Barnes guys may see something different, but you ask almost every player, they say, oh no, Carlo Ancelotti is a super nice guy. And I was just, I was just reading a story. <laughs> it's so funny how things connect. Rudiger. Rudiger said, I'm in my Madrid, my first day settling him down, get a ring on my doorbell, it's Carlo Ancelotti, and he spends literally hours just talking to me, getting to know me, wanting to settle down with me, and so forth. And it says that he's never experienced anything like that from a manager. And those things help because I told you, football is more mental than physical. So if you're right mentally, it's going to accentuate your physical. But if you're not right up here, it is going to affect your physical. So man-to-man -man management, relationships with players, it's extremely important in, in football and extremely important to management. So the mistake that Tuchel made is, and this is what Steve Nichols said, don't make promises. Don't make promises because how you feel on Tuesday about a team is very different from how you feel on a Saturday or the following Tuesday. So the mistake he made was promising, um, promising that, oh yeah, you're definitely going to start the second leg. No, because here's the thing. If Tuchel didn't promise Pulisic that, and Pulisic is like, oh, I, play, I, play, I think I'm, 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 I'm going to play. And he ends up not playing. He'll feel bad. Similar to how bad Bale felt in the UCL final. And he saw him, I, I saw how he took, he, he, he took his anger by scoring those two, two goals. But you feel even worse if you've been made a promise and the manager goes back on his prom promise. See, for me, that's like a character flaw. <laughs> so that's like a personality flaw. Don't make a promise. Once you've made a promise, you've made a promise. So the issue is you don't make any promises because you're like, hey, look, I know you've played one and everything, but let's see how it, how, how, how it goes because I don't want you to now make, make, make a promise to you and on the day I'm like, ah, I'm, I'm feeling different. So that was the mistake he made. And I think once you do that, I, if I was in politics shoes, oh my gosh, like that is irrevocable. We cannot, it's ir um, we cannot re re reconcile. We can't reconcile anymore because I'm like, oh wow, I now I can't trust you. Once once you go back on your word, I can't trust you anymore. Now I'm viewing you a certain way, you know. And I think that that is a very important thing in management. And I don't know how that how may have bled into potentially other players in how to relate to other players. Because my thing is, and that's the mark of a great manager, is. Those who aren't playing, do they still feel part of the squad? That is a great, that is, that is one of the key assets in management is, can you create a scenario, a group where guys that hardly even play, they still feel connected. They still feel part of this, the squad. Everybody is, everybody still likes you. I believe Callum Trotter is one of those dudes where, bro, even if you're not playing much, He's such a nice, cool guy that is so easy to talk to. You can just tell that it's so easy to talk to. It's just how players talk, talk about him. That, yeah, even if I'm happy playing, you're, you're creating such a great environment and how you relate to me is so great. I'm like, it's all cool, you know? But you see with managers who they're players who they just distance away and just have first relationships. I'm like, because look, management, it, it's hard. It is hard. And for me, I don't think you need to be a great man manager to be successful in management. You don't, you know. You've seen guys, and I'm sure Pep has, bro, look at Pep and yeah, two, two, three. Are we saying Pep is not a great manager? Mourinho with um, Martial, with Paul Pogba, is Mourinho not, not, not a great manager? So we've seen great managers who've achieved great success, 
but have fallen out with players and have frozen out our, out of our, our, our players, you know. So it isn't a necessity, but I do think that it does put you in a favorable light if you're one of those managers who, yo, you can get along, you can get along with me. Everyone can get along with me and I can deliver results and I can be successful, which is why I just think that when all is said and done, people will say, we appreciate Pep, we appreciate Fergie, we appreciate all these dudes, but yeah, Carlo, man, this Carlo dude, bro, you know, yeah, he's, he's one of those guys, man. But, and just last before I move here and everything, see, polit and this is just my thing with politics is, yeah, because pol pol if you have frustrations, they have to be valid. If you're not putting in performances, you see, if every time Pulisic came on, for those, okay, I know, I know it's only 15 minutes, but those are 15 minutes, your money. Fans will be on his side. Because fans say, bro, bro, give him more games, man. Every time he comes on, this guy's money. Renato Sanchez at the Euros. Every time he, he, he came on, it was money. And he was money so much that Fernando Sanchez says, Bruno Fernandes, get your ass to the bench. Renato Sanchez, you're, you're starting. Because the few minutes I give you, you use every single second and make every single second count. And you've done so well in such a short period of time, you have made an argument as to why you, sh you, should, you should start. Pulisic, have you made that good of an argument of why you should start? That's the key thing, man.